Okay, so far we've done addition and some multiplication. You might be thinking, James, 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 didn't you skip over something here? Shouldn't we have done subtraction? It is true, I did skip over subtraction. And the reason I skipped over it is because I don't believe subtraction exists. There's no such thing as subtraction. To me, subtraction is still addition. It's the addition of the opposite. Now to explain what I mean by that, I need to tell another story. Another story that's not true. Okay, here goes, another non-true story. When I was a very young child, my parents took me out every day into the middle of the backyard and sat me in a sandbox. Not true. And I started each day in that sandbox, being a very calm and tranquil child, not true, by leveling that sand out to a nice, beautiful, flat, horizontal surface. I made my, my sand beautifully smooth, flat and horizontal. And I spent many hours admiring that beautiful horizontal state. In fact, I even gave that horizontal state a name. Not true. I called it zero. I called that the zero state. And I spent many hours meditating on zero. But then, one day, I had a flash of insight. Because I realized I could reach behind me, grab a handful of sand, and make a pile. I can make a pile in my sandbox. And I called that pile one. And I realized I could do it again and make a second pile. And I called two piles, well, two. I could do it again and make three piles. And I called that three, and so on and so on. I just discovered my, for myself all the counting numbers. Wow. And I realized I could even do mathematics with these counting numbers. For example, I could do two plus three. Let me draw you a picture of two plus three in my sandbox with piles. So two plus three would be two piles. Here they come. Two piles, one, two. Add to that three piles, one, two, three. Bring these piles together, what picture would I get? I'd get a picture like this, which has me what I call five. Two plus three is five. There it is. All right, but then I had the most remarkable, the biggest flash of inside of all. It was astounding. I realized instead of taking handfuls of sand and making piles, I could do the opposite. I could scoop out sand and make a hole. Whoa. And I called that the opposite of a pile. I called that opposite of one. Because I realized in some sense that really is the opposite of a pile. If I take a pile here, here's a pile, there's one, and I add to it the opposite of one, this hole, what could I do in my sandbox? Well, I could take all the sand of this pile and use it to fill up that hole, and that would end up, uh, give me the nice flat horizontal state back at the beginning. I'm back to zero. This hole undid that pile, and that sense is the opposite of a pile. That's why I call it the opposite of one. It brings me back to the zero state. Whoa, which means I also could do two holes. I would call that the opposite of two, or three holes, and I called that the opposite of three. Whoops, getting a bit messy here, opposite of three. I've just discovered for me, myself, all the opposite numbers. Wow. Then, then I went to school, and I realized no one talks about the opposite numbers like this. In fact, I was taught to call them all of a sudden, not opposite numbers, negative numbers. And don't write op for opposite, Write a little dash instead for negative, negative one. A little dash instead of opposite, negative two. A little dash for opposite, negative three. All right, so when someone says negative three, I'm gonna think three holes. I like holes. Negative two, negative one, they're all holes. All right, piles and holes, grand and good. You wanna call them negative, negative ones, negative two, negative three? That's fine, it's just a change of language. But then something really curious happened in school. I was taught this new operation. James, I'm going to, today we're going to learn a new operation called subtraction. Subtraction. So let's do something like 5 take away 3. Subtraction. 5 take away 3. So I was being taught in school to think of like having 5 objects and removing 3 of them and clearly I'll have 2 of them left. But I thought to myself, do you know what? This is really still addition. Here goes. Think of it this way. Think of it as five plus the opposite of three. Oh, here's my notation. I like my notation. So this is really, in my sandbox, five piles, there they are, plus the opposite of three. That'd be three holes. If I take five and the opposite of three, what do I get? Well, I could use all the sand from this pile to fill up that hole. Use all the sand from that pile to fill up that hole. Always the sa all the sand from that pile to fill up that hole. I guess all that's going to cancel out, and I'll just be left with these beginning two piles. Five plus the opposite of three is two. Whoa! Okay. Now, I will admit, what I've actually done here, 
Here are my five original piles, and I actually used my holes, if you like, to take away three of them. So this is actually in sync with what everyone else was doing. You could think of that as five take away three. Uh, five take away three, yes, if you want to. But here's the thing. My thinking has a powerful advantage, because I realized, oh, instead of five take away three, I could do three take away five. Three take away five. Now all my colleagues would say, three take away five, that's impossible. It has no answer. If you've got three objects and you want to remove five of them, you can't do it. There's not enough objects. But I realized in my thinking, this has a perfectly fine answer. Here goes. There's no such thing as subtraction. Think of subtraction as the addition of the opposite. Okay, three piles and five holes. I can totally do that. Here goes. Three piles plus five holes. Here they are. Great. What would happen? Use the sand here to fill up that hole. Use the sand there, fill up that hole. Use that sand, fill up that hole. And what we're now left with? I guess just these two holes. The answer is the opposite of two. The opposite of two. Whoa. So there it is in my notation. So I'm, well, I say to my classmates, no, no, three take away five is really three plus the opposite of five, negative five. And then if you do all that work, you will get the opposite of two. There it is. So five, three take away five actually has an answer. It's the opposite of two. And there it is with piles and holes. Think of opposites, life is good. Subtraction is just the addition of the opposite. For example, and one more final example, if my classmates were working on a problem like this one, uh, let's see, uh, let's do 6 plus 7 take away 9 plus 2 take away 4, something like that. See, I did takeaways, I did subtraction there. I'd say, no, 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 just please think of addition, subtraction is just the addition of the opposite. So you've got 6, 6 piles, 7 plus 7 piles, plus the opposite of 9 piles, that's 9 holes, plus 2 of 2 piles, plus the opposite of 4 piles, that's four holes. Great! Oh, seven piles and two piles, next nine piles with nine holes, all that goes away. Six piles and four holes, in my mind's eye, I can see it's going to be two piles, this must be two. Wonderful, there it is. Subtraction is the addition of the opposite, and that is a very powerful way to think of things.